In this chapter, we're going to look at lists and stacks and queues and priority queues. All of these things fall into the second half of the title, uh, the subtitle of the book. They are data structures. What's a data structure? It's just a collection of data that's organized in some way. Uh, the structure stores the data, but it also supports operations for accessing and manipulating the data, meaning these are objects. These structures are objects, and they have properties and methods that we can utilize to manipulate the data that they contain. We're going to be looking in particular at the Java collection framework. So what is a collection? A collection is a container object. It holds a group of other objects, and we refer to those other objects as elements. The Java collection framework uh, consists of two types of collections. Uh, one for storing a collection is simply just called a collection. Uh, the other that we use to store key value pairs is called a map. We're going to be sticking to collections for this chapter and I, the next chapter we're going to be looking at the different kinds of maps. So one thing to, uh, to understand about the Java collection framework is that it's not just the concrete classes. It's made up of a bunch of interfaces and abstract classes and concrete classes that all work together. So if we look at this diagram here, all of these things fall under this collection framework, okay? with collection being at the top. And you see there's a little dotted line here. And everything to the left of this dotted line are interfaces. So if you remember, an interface is a contract. You're defining, hey, if you want to be part of a collection, for example, you have to implement this method and this method and this other method. Okay. That's all it says. It doesn't, it we don't write the implementation of those uh, if we if we create a collection. Um, if we're writing the collection class, we don't write the implementation. We just define what it means to be a collection. Okay. Between this dotted line and this dotted line are abstract classes. Now, these are provided for us to actually write a lot of the implementation for these interfaces. Okay, so the collection says, hey, you have to have X, Y, and Z methods. Abstract collection does a good job of writing X, Y, and Z for us. Uh, not everything, but it, uh, the abstract uh, classes that we have in here write a lot of the things for us that are required by the interfaces. And then when we get to the concrete classes, uh, the rest of the the rest of the requirements of the interfaces get implemented at that level. Okay, so these are kind of like intermediate intermediaries that take a lot of the work uh, and duplication uh, that would be in these concrete classes out of the, out of the scope. Um, so we've worked with array lists before. So let's take, just take a little look here, array list. Array list is inheriting from something called the abstract list. Um, an abstract list is an abstract class that implements a lot of the requirements of the list interface and the list interface says hey if you're going to write make a list you have to have these particular things in the list and list uh, is a subset of the collection interface so we're going to be talking about we're not going to talk about every single one of these in detail but we're going to talk about many of them so we've we've used array lists already we'll talk a little bit about vectors and stacks uh, array list has kind of replaced those, but they still exist because we don't want to break old code. We're going to talk a little bit about linked lists. We'll talk about priority queues and we'll talk about queues. Um, and, and we'll go from there. But once you get the idea of one or two of these, uh, the rest kind of fall into place. And the whole idea here is that depending on what you're using them for, some of these are more efficient than other, other ones. And we'll talk about that, which ones are more efficient at which tasks. Uh, so it's not really uh, 
I could probably do the same thing with an array list that I'm trying to do with a linked list or vice versa, but the array list is going to be better at some things and the linked list will be better at other things. So depending on what I'm doing, it's important that I understand these other things in between and all these interfaces so that I know which one to select.